Welcome Stronghold fans. It's been a while since I made a Stronghold SHX video. We've had some recent great developments happen, such as Stronghold being announced as a preferred partner by Nacha, and with Sorbonne's smart contract capability fully live and running, we're another step closer to some big utility coming. I have a special treat. In this video, we're going to listen to a Payments Journal podcast with Michael Hurd, the Executive Vice President of ACH Network Administration at Nacha. He's going to speak on Nacha's growth. This will only be good news for the future of Stronghold's volume as the landscape evolves. We're also going to cover smart contract capability for SHX. So if you're a Stronghold SHX fan, please hit the like, share, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with future videos. Let's go. Here's a quick quote before we begin. Patience is not very different from courage. It just takes longer. Don't forget to keep your valuable crypto assets safe and offline with a decent biometric wallet. If you haven't taken your assets offline yet, now is the time to do it. Think about it with possible risk of cyber attacks or exchanges going down or freezing your assets. It's smart to get them offline and onto a hardware wallet. If you purchase it through an affiliate link in the description of any video, you get an amazing deal and it does help support the channel. Thank you. Before we get into that podcast, before we dive in, let's go over, let's recap on some news that happened just earlier this month, not long ago. Nacha welcomes Stronghold as a preferred partner for ACH transactions. This is so bullish. Let's dive in. So earlier this month, Nacha announced Stronghold as a preferred partner for ACH experience in ISO 20022. Stronghold joins a select group of innovators that Nacha recognizes for offering products and services that align with Nacha's core strategies to advance the ACH network. The key is to advance it, meaning that this technology in the short term is going to start to be used more and more. We knew that they were partnered with Nacha, but now they are preferred partner, which tells me utility, strong utilities on the horizon. Continues here that Nacha is pleased to welcome Stronghold as our newest preferred partner, said Jane Lemaire, Nacha's president and CEO. Nacha's preferred partners are innovators focusing on ways to enhance the ways ACH payments are sent and received. Stronghold provides an embedded payment product that enables consumers and connect their bank accounts for seamless pay to pay pay to bank transactions, enhancing checkout experience for end users. Additionally, Stronghold leverages ISO 20022 messaging for various payment workflows, assisting in treasury reporting and payment acceptance across multiple payment rails. Stronghold is able to provide its unique focus and expertise on pay by bank embedded payments to the wider network, said Tammy Camp, the CEO of Stronghold. We are bringing modern ACH into new spaces. This partnership is a great step towards making payments more innovative, accessible, and secure with Notch's partnership. We're ready to tackle new challenges and lead the way in the payments industry. So that is huge right now. And I'm going to talk more on it before the podcast. But, you know, as faster payments evolves, it's only natural for them to want to go to instant settlement. I want to add that now Sorbonne is fully up and running. SHX has smart contract capability. It's SHX on steroids. So Sorbon now empowers Stronghold SHX and Stellar blockchain and ecosystem as a whole. Let's dive into this Medium article. So blockchain technology has revolutionized the way we handle financial transactions. Among the innovative platforms is Sorbon, a smart contract platform designed to enhance the capabilities of Stellar blockchain and ecosystem. We built Sorbon because as developers, we didn't see the kind of smart contract platform we wanted to work within the market. Tomer Weller, Sorbonne's lead developer and vice president of tech strategy at the Stellar Development Foundation stated that. So what is Sorbonne? Sorbonne is a smart contract platform. In case, in case you're a stronghold fan and you're not very familiar with what Sorbonne is, it's a smart contract platform built on Stellar that focuses on making transactions on the Stellar network smoother and more efficient. It was created to tackle the challenges of the interoperability and flexibility in smart contracts, aiming to create a seamless DeFi experience within the Stellar ecosystem. In simple words, Sorbon offers a unique capability that sets it apart from networks such as Avalanche and Solana. The ability to allow users to cash into DeFi unlike solutions like Polygon for Ethereum or the Lightning Network for Bitcoin, Sorbon distinguishes itself 
by not functioning as a sidechain or layer two blockchain network. Instead, Sorbonne stands as a smart contract platform specifically designed to fully integrate with the established Stellar blockchain, ensuring a smooth incorporation without any disruption to existing functionality. Sorbonne is open source. This brings trust to investors because it can be independently verified by many parties. Sorbonne's smart contract platform allows Stronghold to implement more complex and secure financial instruments, such as tokenized assets, lending protocols, and decentralized exchanges on the Stellar blockchain. This expands Stronghold service offerings and attracts a wider range of users interested in DeFi solutions. Interoperability, Sorbonne's focus on smart contract interoperability enables seamless interaction between Stronghold services and other decentralized applications within the Stellar ecosystem. This interoperability fosters a vibrant DeFi environment where users can easily access and utilize various financial products and services. You have enhanced security. You have scalability with Sorbon and Stronghold now. You have ecosystem growth by leveraging Sorbon's developer-friendly environment and Stellar Development Foundation Sorbon Adoption Fund. Stronghold can actively engage developers and builders to create innovative solutions and expand SHX tokens utility right there within the ecosystem. This drives ecosystem growth and increases the token's value proposition. That is a plus. All right, Stronghold fans, we're going to hear Notch's Executive Vice President of ACH Network Administration, Michael Hurd. He's going to speak on his Payments Journal podcast to discuss what is driving the ACH Network's continuing gains so far in 2024. Now, some might state they're not talking about Stronghold. The reason why this is important for Stronghold is because around the same time this podcast came out, Notch just announced Stronghold is a preferred partner. The technology is still evolving right now. We're still getting regulatory clarity. The dust is still settling. A lot of these businesses are not using instant payments just yet. There are some. But as this technology continues to grow, a lot of these businesses, they're going to go to the faster payments. So where does that leave Nacha? They don't want to be left out. Of course, they have growth right now, and the technology has improved drastically, which you're going to hear in this, in this uh, podcast. But the thing is, is that we're getting to that tipping point where we're going to start receive, uh, seeing instant settlement, not even same day, instant settlement. So a lot of these businesses, they're going to see that, hey, they can offer instant settlement. It, Nacha will be in a position to either evolve or get pushed off a cliff. It's only natural for these businesses to want to continuously progress with uh, the new technology that's evolving. So day settlement's awesome. Instant settlement's even better. And as this landscape evolves, these businesses are going to want to get uh, jump on board with instant settlement. You know, we see all the regulatory uh, clarity coming. We, we see Fed now. We know that Fed wire's coming. All this instant settlement is going to push NACHA in, in, a, in that direction. But the thing is, is that they just announced around the same time as this podcast that they're a preferred partner with Stronghold. So what does that tell you? But this podcast is showing the growth that Nacha has. Now, imagine when they do pull that ace out of their sleeve in that stronghold. That's going to be a lot of volume for stronghold. Joining me today to delve into this is Mike Hurd, Senior Vice President of ACH Network Administration and Nacha, and Elisa Tavilla, Director of Debit at Javelin Strategy and Research. Mike and Elisa, it's great to have you both back. To start things off, Mike, what's the state of the ECH network now that we're halfway through 2024? So it's quite good, actually. Second quarter uh, ACH payment volume uh, increased by over 6% versus a year ago, 6.3%. So the rate of growth is up fairly substantially over uh, last year. An average daily payment volume is now more than 132 million payments per day. So we're talking about some large numbers. Year to date through the second quarter, ACH network payment volume is up to $16.5 billion, which is 5.9% over the same period last year. And the dollar value of payments flowing through the network is up to over $42 trillion in the first half of the year, which is a 12% um, increase on a year-over-year -year basis. So all in all, the second quarter was outstanding one for the ACH network. And 2024 is shaping up to be a very strong year. That's very impressive uh, to hear all the record-breaking volume. 
that is being transacted over ACH, although I think this comes as no surprise with increasing automation of business processes and the digitization of payments. Both businesses and consumers are looking for greater efficiency. There's more data that is available with digital payments and also helps businesses improve cash flow as well as consumers too. So it's certainly no surprise to see such a uh, strong growth across the ACH network to date this year. And Mike, you've shared a lot of stats, which include overall volume and value increases. To dig a little deeper into that and kind of get the story behind these numbers, how are B2B, direct deposit, healthcare, internet, and P2P payments driving these volume increases? Uh, Yeah, so there are a couple specific areas to highlight that are really driving overall ACH volume growth. The first, as you referenced, is B2B payments. So we're on quite the run in which B2B volume is growing by more than 10% per year. That's been a longstanding trend for about the last, let's say, seven or eight years. So just in our last quarter, the second quarter, ACH B2B volume was over $1.8 billion. So again, more than a 10% increase on a year-over-year basis, 10.9% actually. And so while we know there are still pockets of check use in B2B, such as in some institutions of higher education, as an example, overall check volume seems to be declining and and moving more towards ACH in the B2B space. A second area to call out, consumer ACH debits that are authorized and initiated online, such as for single and recurring bill payments and account transfers. This volume was more than $2.6 $2.6 billion in the second quarter of 2024, which is up 8.3%. And so that should result in going over 10 billion payments for the calendar year. And to me, that's kind of an incredible notion um, when considering that this payment method and channel barely existed 20 years ago. And to repeat, and this year, we're probably going to do more than 10 billion consumer internet-initiated payments. So I think really an incredible success story for the ACH network. Direct deposit. So direct deposit is for payroll, benefits, and other uses. The volume there is over $2.1 billion, an increase of about 3% on a year-over-year basis. And then something that's kind of interesting is that the growth in healthcare claim payments, actually the growth rate has slowed a little bit. And we think this is because the healthcare sector was hit by a very large scale and high profile ransomware attack. So there was a large processor in healthcare claim payments that for some period of time was unable to process claim payments. And subsequently, we saw healthcare claim payment volume increase by only 2.8% in the second quarter compared to a year ago. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned the decline of checks in the B2B space. I think it's also important to note that checks continue to decline in the consumer space as well. As you might have heard in recent news, Target stopped accepting personal checks in their stores last week or in mid-July. Actually, the other day I was at Petco with Mm -hmm. my dog. I know you mentioned you have your cat with you today. said my dog and there was a sign by the grooming section that said that Petco will no longer be accepting personal checks beginning, I believe, at the 1st of August or sometime within the next few weeks. So certainly checks are declining across the board. I think based on our Javelin data, consumers are using A to A payments for bill payment, as you mentioned, fewer checks being used, and also for P to P. And in particular, our surveys show that consumers are interested in making Faster payments uh, will find it most beneficial if they can make faster payments electronically, for example, with ACH, in particular when they're paying their bills. I think you might have mentioned same-day ACH earlier, or we'll be talking about that Mm -hmm. later in the conversation. So So I don't know about you, but my cat stopped writing personal checks a long time ago. (laughs) That's a, actually, it's not really surprising, I think, to, to hear about an entity like Target or Petco that is going to stop accepting personal checks. I'm, I would guess that the number that they were still getting is probably infinitesimally small to begin with. And there's probably a lot of 
process you have in place and staff training to have in place to accept one check a week. So it's not surprising that they want to stop accepting them. You both mentioned that, and as we've all seen, there has been this decline in checks and we have seen more adoption in terms of instant payments, both among consumers and businesses. On that note, we've also seen that CMD ACH has historically played a key role in driving ACH volume. Mike, can you speak to how CMD ACH has grown in the first half of this year? Sure, yeah. To say it has a key role, I think, is an understatement. Same day, ACH volume so far in 2024 is up 47% year over year. That's 47%. So it's up to 566 million payments in the first half of the year. So in all likelihood, we'll exceed a billion same-day ACH payments this year for the first time ever. April, in, in particular, was a banner month. Maybe that's because it was tax month. I'm not really sure. But we had over 100 million same-day ACH payments in a month for the first time ever. Uh, it was actually 107.8 million same-day payments for that month. And also, you know, a, a new high in, in dollars moved at $293 billion dollars in a month uh, moving by same day ACH. So I think there are some growth areas that are uh, similar to the rest of what's going on in ACH. And I'm going to call out again, especially B2B and consumer payments that are initiated online. I think there's a strong use case for same day ACH movement of funds for especially account transfers and both consumers and businesses conduct account transfers as well as for consumers that would be inclusive of transfers to other types of non-DDA accounts like brokerage accounts and digital wallets and other types of online services that are are based on having an account. So H does support the ability for the the two-way flow of funds where we have both the, the, the debit pull and the credit push. 